Hey everyone, Ethan here. I first started playing video games around the age of three. It didn't take very long for me to find the first game series that I would become quite attached to. I discovered Kirby when I first played Super Smash Bros. Melee. He was my favorite character to use at the time because of how easy he was to use as a kid. I then started playing a handful of Kirby games, which I really enjoyed. There was one that left a significant lasting impression on me, which is Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. This is kind of a first in my videos where I'm not talking about the first game in a series. In fact, Amazing Mirror didn't release until 12 years after the Kirby series began. Either way, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror is a different take on the Kirby series where instead of a linear platformer, it's a Metroidvania collectathon. You play as one of four Kirbys trying to recover the eight mirror shards to complete a mirror portal and return to your homeworld of Dreamland. There are nine areas of the game to explore in any order that you please. Kirby controls like he usually does, being able to float, inhale enemies, copy their abilities, as well as being able to jump, run, and slide. His health works by having a certain number of hits he can take before dying. He can recover his health by eating various food items that you come across. You also have a certain number of lives that works like most life-based systems. You die, and it goes down until you run out. Getting a game over in this game only sets you back in terms of progress by making you restart from the hub area instead of the previous room you were in. The biggest difference in terms of mechanics comes from having your other three Kirby allies accompany you on your journey. They will generally try to follow you, help you defeat enemies, and sometimes replenish some of your health. Eventually, they probably won't be able to keep up, so they'll just go off exploring on their own. Thankfully, every Kirby comes equipped with a cell phone, letting you summon your friends to your location no matter how far away they are. Be careful though, you could only hold a maximum of three charges at once, so make sure you keep on the lookout for batteries. This game can be played by yourself or up to three other friends, which is just insane to me. In terms of the story, I'd say that this game has just enough of one to warrant its own small section. If you don't want to hear what little and insignificant spoilers this game has to offer, then you could skip over this section. Somewhere in the Kirbyverse, there is a mirror world that is being overrun by an evil shadowy force. Kirby is attacked and split into four versions of himself by a dark evil Meta Knight. After being split, the now four Kirbys pursue the strange Meta Knight through a portal into the mirror world. Upon arriving, the real Meta Knight is defeated in battle from his shadowy mirror world counterpart, and thrown back into the mirror portal, leaving the Kirby stranded. The Kirbys must recover all eight of the mirror world shards to return home. Upon completing the mirror and entering it, you find yourself face to face with Dark Meta Knight. After dispatching him, you fight the game's final boss, Dark Mind. Defeating him will restore balance to the mirror world, letting the Kirbys and Meta Knight return home. With the plot out of the way, let's talk about Adventure Mode itself. The mode is split up into nine different areas to explore, with them all being connected to each other in some way. The game forces you to start in Rainbow Route, the game's first area, but from there the sky's the limit in terms of possibilities for progression. Rainbow Route also acts as a hub world, giving you the most options in terms of exploration and is the only area lacking a boss and mirror shard. Your goal, if you're just trying to beat the game, is to find each boss from each area and defeat them. Thankfully, there is a map to help prevent you from getting lost. The game also features collectibles, which I will go into very soon. Each area has its own theming and follows the rule of alliteration. Rainbow Route is probably the most diverse being made up of forests, grasslands, mountains, and caves. Area 2, Moonlight Mansion, takes place in a purpley mansion at night. Area 3, Cabbage Caverns, is a series of purple caverns with some water sections. Area 4, Mustard Mountain, is a red-hot lava-filled active volcano. Area 5, Carrot Castle, is a large castle with long hallways. Area 6, Olive Ocean, is pretty much nothing but water. Area 7, Peppermint Palace, is an icy, more confusing version of Carrot Castle. Area 8, Radish Ruins, takes place in the ruins of an ancient bygone civilization. 
And finally, Area 9 Candy Constellation takes place in space and is super colorful. The game features 39 collectibles that can be found throughout the mirror world. Every single collectible is found within small or large treasure chests. Small chests sometimes contain food instead of the more desirable collectibles. There are five types of collectibles. Spray paint cans are the most abundant, taking up 14 of the 39 total slots and allow you to change your Kirby's color palette. My favorite is easily orange, but I do wish that there were even more palettes to find and use. There are 10 different music sheets which come with a specific number of sounds and songs and are grouped together by their sound or music type. They can be played on the sound player which is a collectible itself. You can also find a map of each area of the game as well as a world map to give you a much better sense of direction. Lastly, four vitality hearts can be found which each give you one permanent bar of health. The game has two great ways of tracking your collectible progress. The first is the collection room on the main menu. The second is that when viewing the map, a room will shine if it has been completed, but will remain static if there's something still waiting to be collected from that room. To get 100% in the game, all collectibles must be found. Collectibles usually require some sort of small puzzle or a certain copy ability to be obtained, so they're not just given out for free. Collectibles are easily one of my favorite parts of this game and I always have a blast finding each one. Kirby's copy ability is one of, if not his most recognizable trait. This game includes 20 returning copy abilities and 6 new additions totaling 26. You can obtain one by either inhaling an enemy, interacting with a copy ability trophy, or by one of the copy abilities themselves. I'm not going to go over every single one, but instead give a brief overview of what they generally accomplish. Copy abilities aid you in either defeating enemies, accessing treasure chests, or having some other niche use. Most of the abilities in the game have the ability to both damage enemies and complete puzzles with varying levels of usefulness and success. Puzzles can usually be completed using 2-4 to four abilities depending on the situation. For example, there are suspended platforms that are usually guarding something of interest. You're able to cut them down using the Cutter and Cupid abilities as well as any ability that uses a sword. Speaking of Cutter, it along with UFO and Smash are my personal favorite abilities in this game as well as Kirby games as a whole. Cutter allows you to throw a boomerang that can be controlled while in midair. It's not very strong, but I love its design and utility. UFO, as the name implies, turns Kirby into a UFO, allowing him to hover infinitely, with the added bonus of borrowing two attacks from other copy abilities being Beam and Laser. Sadly though, it can't be brought back to the hub world and fails to navigate ladders. Smash is a super cool idea, giving Kirby his moveset from the Super Smash Bros. game series. Since his moveset in Smash is inspired by several copy abilities in the game, it essentially allows Kirby to have his sword, hammer, and stone ability all in one, plus an extra spin attack. This ability alone can solve 95% of the game's puzzles, which makes it easily the most useful ability in the game. With the copy abilities out of the way, let's talk about the primary source for getting them, the enemies. There are three types of enemies, the first of which are regular enemies. This makes up most of the game's enemies. They come in a variety of forms, most of them once inhaled will grant an ability based on what enemy was swallowed. However, some of them don't grant an ability. There are also some enemies like the Gordo and the Scarfy that are immune to being inhaled in the Scarfy's case and immune entirely in the Gordo's case. There are also a few enemies that are a larger, tougher version of their smaller self, but not too much to be considered a boss. The next enemy type is the sub-bosses, which are stronger enemies with their own theme and displayed health bar, but aren't too threatening and typically grant more useful abilities or are guarding a treasure chest. The final set of enemies are the bosses, which include each of the area bosses and the final boss. Each of these bosses are guarding a piece of the mirror or are the sole reason Kirby is in the mirror world in the first place. Before moving on, I just want to take a moment to reflect on how silly and amazing some of the enemy names are. Like, this one's name is Chip. Why? This one is Rocky, which is pretty cute. And this one is my personal favorite. His name is Cookin'. Cookin'! 
Thankfully, if you ever want to discover some of these names for yourself, you can see the enemy's name if it attacks you or is attacked by you. If you've exhausted your time in adventure mode, then you could always spend time playing sub games. The game has a total of four, three of which are unlocked from the beginning and the final one being unlocked once you've achieved 100% completion in adventure. The first three are four player mini games that are meant to be small fun party games. Each of the three party games has three levels which each being progressively more difficult. Speed Eaters is a reaction based game where there is a serving of food on a table and you must press A the fastest as soon as the lid is lifted. Although sometimes the food is replaced with bombs, which if inhaled will keep you out for a round. The first to fill up their hunger meter wins. Crackety Hack is a timing minigame where you must punch a rock harder than your opponents. You charge your attack by timing an A press when the bar is as full as you can get it three times and timing your aim on the rock itself. Kirby Wave Ride is a racing minigame where everyone is surfing on warp stars and you gain speed by timing your jumps off of the edges of waves. The final minigame is Boss Endurance, which is a boss rush style game mode. You fight one mini boss or area boss one after another. After each is defeated, you're taken to a restroom where you can choose to use one of your four Mega Mados and one of two copy abilities before moving on to the next fight. If you die, you must restart from the beginning. Something that boggles my mind that I somewhat recently found out was that this game has four player multiplayer for every mode in this game. I'm not surprised that the sub games do as they seem tailor made to be played with friends, but I would have never expected the adventure mode to be playable with up to four people. There also doesn't seem to be much in the way of caveats for adventures multiplayer either. If you wanted to go to area six, but your buddy wanted to explore area three, then you absolutely could. The only restriction I found was that the game would only save progress for the host. Even then though, the game is super short and can be made even shorter with friends, so it's not like playing through it multiple times would be a chore. Unfortunately, since this game was created in the era before online gaming, you had to have friends that also own the game nearby and one of you had to have a link cable. I've never gotten the opportunity to play this game with friends, but I could say for certain that it would improve my experience tenfold if I did. In terms of graphics, this game looks very good. It's obvious that it was made for a handheld device released in 2001, but the pixel art is super colorful, detailed, and very pleasing to look at. The game's soundtrack is super catchy, with each area having their own distinct theme. My favorite tracks are probably Cabbage Cavern and the final boss's Phase 3 theme. Kirby and the Amazing Mirror was released in 2004 on the Game Boy Advance. The game has not received any remasters or remakes, but has been made available on a somewhat more modern platform. If you want to play the game on the original hardware, it's unfortunately going to cost you as the game usually sells for around $50. And that's usually just the cartridge, which is actually $20 more than the original price of the game when it released. The game is thankfully available for much cheaper at $6.99 USD on the Wii U Virtual Console. Unfortunately, if you do play it on Wii U, multiplayer is completely inaccessible. The game is technically on the 3DS, but was only made available for a very limited time back in 2011. It would be nice if Nintendo made GBA games available on the Switch, but even then, they're probably just going to lock them behind an exclusive tier of NSO. As with any Nintendo game though, the best way to play is usually always through unofficial means, which in this case, I'd say is the best option unless you own a Wii U. I thought quite a bit about where I want to rank this game and have found a comfortable spot for it. Upon comparing my time spent with this game and the others on the list, I found that Kirby and the Amazing Mirror should be placed in the number two spot above Pikmin but below Halo CE. I love Pikmin to death, but the first game has a few minor things that irk me while Amazing Mirror is Kirby at its absolute best in my opinion. I would love more Kirby games in the Metroidvania genre in the future as I much prefer it to the linear levels the series is known for, though I'm not sure if this is an unpopular opinion or not. Thank you all so much for watching. Have you played a Kirby game before? If so, how do you think it stacks up against other platformers? I appreciate and look forward to all feedback, comments, and likes. 
Thanks again, and I hope to see you again soon. And this one is my personal favorite. His name is Cookin'. Cookin'!